Alonzo is a phenomenon in the F1 sport. I mean, for years, this guy has been a natural talent and just exceeds the expectations of everybody, including the team and the staff that they work around. But how has he made the AMR23 faster than it already is? Well, there's a couple of driving techniques that make him unique to himself, but also in comparison to his teammate, what he is doing different. I mean, if you don't know who Fernando Alonso is, and if you didn't expect him to actually destroy Lance Stroll this year, you're either a delusional fan for Lance Stroll, you haven't been watching the sport for a very long time, or you absolutely hate Fernando Alonso's guts. Fernando Alonso has only lost very few battles between teammates. The only one really being recognizable was Lewis Hamilton, and arguably, they were pretty much the same pace. I would say they were the same pace while they fought in McLaren. He has had one thing that has been always very particular to him, and most drivers do not like this type of style of driving, but Fernando does. He loves a lot of understeer when he is driving. So naturally, understeer is, the wheel is turning a little bit less than it should be, so you have to actually rotate the wheel even more. This is something that he prefers in his driving style. Other drivers have different preferences, Max Verstappen being a famous one for a bunch of oversteer. It's usually a balance i mean obviously the ideal car would have to have a perfect balance between no oversteer and no understeer if they had to choose between the two fernando alonso would be the guy that picks understeer but why does this kind of go into his advantage with this car so the actual amr 23 it started off the season extremely strong on traction it's still a traction beast to be honest the only track that it really didn't look great on was monza i mean Look at these couple of turns where Fernando Alonso literally has zero grip. This was not something that was common in the AMR23 from the beginning of the season to now the car has been a grip monster. So this actually goes into the style that Alonso wants. The perfect example and the one that I want to give you for is turn one into Bahrain and talk about this one at first. So in the beginning of the season, Lance Stroll actually had a hurt wrist. So he was compromised into some turns and wasn't able to take them at the optimal speed, but also to the benefit of the AMR 23. With a lot of traction, you usually do not want to take a U-shaped turn. You wanna take a V-shaped turn because you can get on the accelerator quicker, but you also save your tires in that type of way. This works a lot better for understeer. Oversteer would usually take the normal traditional line. Lance Stroll was taking the normal traditional line in this race. Now, he claims that it was a wrist problem, but I'm gonna bring up another example later on in this video that tells me that Lance Stroll just kind of drives like this. But Fernando was taking the V-shaped line. He was actually compromising his turn one, going into turns two and three at a faster pace because he compromised turn one, so taking it at that V shape. Not as much as you think, but he goes a little bit more to the outside, uses that preference of understeer, and gets into the corner at a sharper rate than what Lance was doing. Lance was doing it at a more balanced rate. Like I said, this compromises your turn one, so it'll naturally be slower, but two and three will be faster. He was doing this throughout the whole entire race, and Lance was doing the same. So, by the end of the race, Lance Stroll wasn't actually able to catch up to Lewis Hamilton or Carlos Sainz because he shredded his tires. This helps with tires. First of all, that is another big thing. Understeer is always the preferable one for tires. Now, if you're Max Verstappen and you know how to drive an oversteer, it is naturally a teeny bit faster, but it also isn't great on your tires if you don't know what you are doing. It'll always make it a lot worse. An example is Leclerc. Now, Leclerc isn't the greatest on his tires, but his driving style also doesn't help tires. So, Carlos Sainz, sometimes in the race, is able to actually catch up to him and have the faster pace because... Leclerc isn't driving with the right pace on oversteer. It just promotes a lot more sliding, and if you're sliding a lot more, you're not getting the traction, you're worsening your tires, and you're making a lot more flat spots in the tires and really just ripping up that, that whole tire in general. Now, for Fernando's case, throughout his career, he has loved being able to save his tires, and he's been great at doing it. In his Renault days, when he was driving that beautiful car, I mean, just look at this beautiful picture of this car, but also, Look at him driving it. It is such a phenomenal car to even just look at. The arrow on it is a thing of beauty, but also the colorway and delivery. Back in that day, the Renault was actually very good on understeer. Now, this isn't a great thing for a car, but in that time, they weren't actually allowed to pit. It was just 
whatever tires you had on for the race, that was all you were doing for the race. So obviously tire saving, but also being smart with your tires was very important back in this day. Tires weren't shredding as much as they do now, obviously. So it's not like they were just running one tire for the whole entire race and I think was getting shred up like crazy. It was a more durable tire, but yet again, it was still important to save your tires for certain strategies, depending on what you are doing. And Fernando was a beast at that time. And yet again, he still is. Some people are even saying he's still in his prime. But this is now translated to nowadays where his past experience and knowledge is actually coming handy for the car nowadays. Before I get into the rest of this video and giving a couple more examples for Fernando Alonso, I wanted to thank you guys so much for the support. The Alex album video that actually awesome. So this is what made me want to make this one. Thank you so much for the support. Please leave a like. If you haven't subscribed, that would mean the world. I'm almost 10K and that would mean a lot to me. So thank you so much for the support. Let's get back into the Fernando Alonso video. Okay, as I said in the beginning of the video, I wanted to give another example of how Fernando Alonso's unique driving style, but also what he has been really doing in this season has made the AMR 23 faster. It's not a slow car, we know this. The AMR 23 has actually been pretty consistent on tracks with a lot of downforce. Now, as I showed in the Monza example, they also weren't great in Silverstone. Silverstone, they had kind of the same problem, not as great on traction. They went for a compromise that did not work. Whenever they go for a low, downforce wing they kind of struggle the only exception was baku but some regulations hit the whole entire flexi floor thing is coming to singapore but singapore is naturally fernando alonso's best chance at winning a grand prix and let's correlate kind of this corner that i was talking about with the driving style as to why singapore can be very strong for them but also what fernando has been doing as i said the other corner that i was talking about was canada turn 10. Now, obviously this is just a hairpin and it can be taken in multiple ways, but one way is faster for this car than the other. In qualifying, this actually compromises time and he could have possibly fought with Max Verstappen for a pole lap if he was able to take this hairpin differently, but the car doesn't really suit this type of driving style, even though Lance Stroll was trying to push it to do that. Fernando found the optimal line. Yet again, it's pushing the car as much left as possible as you can and compromising that hairpin line to actually have a better exit. The car does this much better. Lance Stroll, yet again, was taking a normal line. He wasn't compromising his exit. Instead, it was just taking it normally like any other driver would. Fernando's understanding of the game, understanding of the car is what makes him excel so much faster than everybody else. In Singapore, there are multiple different chicanes that he will have to take different lines for. Now, this year with the actual straightaway that they added in Singapore, that won't necessarily help the AMR car, but the car is great at taking curbs. Canada was a track with a lot of curbs. Even after those nasty upgrades that kind of screwed them for a couple of races, they were still performing very strongly in Canada with a lot of curbs, a lot of that rear downforce grip that Fernando loves. As an understeer driver, he loves a bunch of rear grip. Fernando has just exceeded expectations in this season. He's exceeded mine big time, but also the team at Aston Martin. He's made them go from, you know what, we're shooting for P4 to, wow, a podium is actually possible in every single race. And now we are actually trying to fight for P2. Mike Cracks, different mindset has all been put in by Fernando Alonso. And it is because he is driving the car faster. I mean, he has naturally been throughout the whole entire season five to six tenths faster than Stroll. That is an insane number. That is a very big number. And Stroll is not a slouch. I know he gets a bunch of stick. I know he's been terrible in these last races. And I do not think he's a great driver by no means. But I do not think that he is some slouch. He's better than Logan. He's better than other drivers on the grid. He has still his place here in Formula One. Is it in a top team like Aston Martin? I don't think so. I think they need a different driver. Regardless, I got to compare the two because the two are in a team. And naturally, Fernando has just been smarter, his technique has been better, and he has just been the phenomenal driver to watch out for in 2023. And in my opinion, has been just that much better than anybody else with the exceptions of Max Verstappen, Lewis is pretty close, and Albon. These top four guys have all been different for the teams. And this style of driving and what Fernando has been able to actually extract out of this car has given him that extra pace to find motivation to actually go for a championship in 2024. The words of Fernando Alonso. Now let me know your thoughts down below. What do you guys actually think? Do you think that experience in this whole entire old age of Fernando Alonso has really given him that extra edge on other drivers and that is why he is so insanely fast? 
And what do you think of the whole entire comparison of him and Lance? Another driver, I want to hear your thoughts down below. Please leave a like, subscribe, it would mean the world, and 